Well, people don't, don't know what we do right. because we do everything before they show up. All of our work is done in plan to stay ahead of play. We're rolling out with 60 guys every morning to maintain two top 100 golf courses. There is not a group that's working harder or, in my estimation, is more important than those guys down in the maintenance shop. There's so many more challenges over the U.S. Open being from June to September. If it's firm and Mother Nature just kind of takes a back seat, game on. A lot more detail than I think most people think. It's just been this roller coaster all summer long. Probably getting excited. It's been a couple crazy months of planning. The energy is really backed up. They're ready to go. They can't wait to see how the golf course they've been working on is going to be presented. Knowing that we can't have a blade of grass out of place, okay wasn't good enough. Fairways are narrow. Rough will be penal. It's just a complete examination. I mean, the golf course here sets up to be a classic U.S. Open. There's no let up. I mean, you're going to have to grind from the first hole to the 18th hole. To be hosting the U.S. Open, I mean, I, I, I tell people it's like probably the Super Bowl. The maintenance crew at Winged Foot Golf Club is preparing the West Course for the U.S. Open just 17 days away. Director of Golf Courses Steve Rabidou meets with his team to plan out the day ahead. Probably need two at least five, two. Two five. Yeah. Probably need at least two for three and a half, I think. Yeah, we cut on Wednesday. Copy, John. Four, four holes. Go for yours. Nick, you sound out here looking like me. Yeah, 10 four. Here. I mean, it's 521, we can probably get the road guys going. All right, I don't know if I'm going to get these guys going. Yep. You're going to go water then? Yep. You'll be out there with those guys? Yep. Right, these guys going outside, yeah. Yeah, Alright, so we've got Monday fun day, crazy day this morning, right? Jared's gonna spin them, you're gonna roll them. Ahead of you are the guys spraying the fertilizer on the green strand. That's it, right? Yeah. Alright, go. Cool. And still an hour away from sunrise, the crew breaks to start their day. Sixty workers in total head out to their positions on the golf course, while Steve keeps a close eye on all of them. I walk the golf course every morning. And I'm checking for the, the heights. I'm checking to see how the cuts are. I always check to see how much grass we're getting. Believe it or not, you, I don't want to get a lot of grass. So I'm always looking at uh, how much yield, how much clipping yield we would get. Because uh, if we're getting too much grass, especially on greens, the greens are too slow. Yeah, and I hate mowing in the dark. You can't see, you know, in that time of the year when you're mowing, leaves are falling. Branches, sticks, twigs, acorns, fruit from trees, whatever, hickories, whatever, the, the, the seeds are falling. And then you don't want to 
mow something and drag it and scrape a line and screw stuff up. It's awful. I mean, this is probably civil twilight, what you'd call it right now. You can still, still can't see well. Not when you're trying to cut and be precise as we are. Nice out here right now. I know. In the 50s. That's a godsend. For us, when it gets in the 50s at night, that's a game changer. If we can get some 50s at night during the championship, the golf course just firms up. It's all about the soil temperature. You know, it just lowers everything down, and uh, the grass is just happy at 59 degrees. Hopefully everything lines up and we get the conditions where we want it and the rough where we want it. These guys are good. They're really good. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully the course holds up. I think it will. But I'll know in three weeks. So we're rolling the green. Uh, smooths it out. Gets all the foot traffic away from yesterday, keeps them firm. You know, during the championship, we will be mowing and rolling every day. I'm anticipating us not having to do a, a lot to the greens to get them where we want them for the championship, based on what, how we manage them every day, uh, which is nice. The morning responsibilities continue for the crew as Steve does a final lap down the fairway to check on Winged Foot's most prized possession. This is gonna have a graduated rough. This hole is gonna have a graduated rough of probably seven feet. We might start mowing that this afternoon. Which will be at three and a half inches, and then it will go to the five. I threw two balls down the other day. We have a test area that we're mowing at five inches. And I went there and I threw two balls down in like a 10, 15 foot area and I lost one of them. I mean, I was walking around trying to find them. It was just so gnarly at five inches. It was, it's crazy. With the sun rising and Steve finishing up his morning walk, the rest of his team continues to prep for the remainder of their day. My name is Weston Neff. I am the U.S. Open Superintendent here at Wingfoot Golf Club. We have a large turf team, and our turf team consists of um, Weston, who's our U.S. Open superintendent, who's been with me since the Wheatley days. Uh, we have a superintendent in each golf course. We have West Superintendent JR and an East Course Superintendent uh, Steve Biggs, our token Jets fan, so we give him shit all the time. It's a lot more detail than I think most people think. We, uh, we crush the hours. I mean, right now we're, we're 4.30 in the morning getting here, leaving at 7 o'clock at night, 7.30 at the earliest. But there's always pressure here at Wingfoot. We, we put this product on for the members every day. Every day is a championship for us. Grow the rough out for the U.S. Open. We, uh, a lot of these conditions you're going to see on TV and stuff is what we have on, on a daily basis. We have a very tight-knit group of guys. Two guys that work under me, J.R. LePan and Steve Bigelow, create that, that four-person team. I like that they're driving on the fairway, though. Once the rope lines are up, there's exit here, exit here. Yeah, it should be fine. Back low, you pluck the line. Yeah. They go out. I've been here for about seven seasons now. Uh, been in the turf industry for ten. It's go time right now. You can really start to feel the energy from everybody here. Everybody's excited. Everybody's got a little pep in their step. It's it's long days, but I think everybody's starting to feel the adrenaline. 0.57 acres, right? 25,000 square feet. So five times 0.57. Three ounces, three ounces total. Everything's harder than dark. This guy's water this green three times a day for the last hundred days. So, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times he's pulled out this hose in this green this summer. So he knows it. You can put the heads up and you can cover this thing with 10 minutes of water right now, but it's not gonna be uniform. It's just windy. Different ridges need more water than the swales. Traffic areas where guys walk, in, walk on and off of need more water. With the hose, you can hit surrounds, hit certain spots. It's just detailed. What we get for numbers. I'm trying to follow him now. See yeah. a lot of 17 down to 49. Really? Just trying to dial in the green so they'll last the whole day without us having the water for the open with the weather and also playability. 
Every green has specific painting areas. Um, you're not just going out there blindly and trying to find a place where a pin goes. Each green has five, six spots that we generally place pins. The basis of what we use is we don't want the putt, the speed of the putt to increase or decrease within three feet of the hole. So I generally look for a spot that's 360 degrees below three and a half percent of slope. Um, but within those spots, you can you can tuck it more into a bunker. You can pull it more towards a towards an aggressive slope. So it, no hole each day is the same. I could put the back left pin on 18 two days in a row, and it's going to be a completely different pin when you play to it. So you guys are doing bunker prep for the open. So they kind of weed they weed the bunker. Um, they go through. They they move the sand around from highs to lows. Um, nobody wants too soft of a bunker. And what we actually do is we water the faces and we take a golf cart. We drive a golf cart up the face to pack it in. And so he'll go through back and forth, up and down, up and down, behind the water to pack that sand in um, so we don't get any plugged balls in the face. I think most people would be upset if they saw a golf cart in their bunker, but uh, I mean, some people use plate tamps. You know, there's several methods to it, but I mean, a golf cart works. Wes is very good at handling crew, running the crew, um, and he takes input from us very well. He's got some of the excellent in these, too. Coots. Matt's with Cody. Do we have to do bunkers? Do we have rotary bunkers? Butt heads on certain things, but I mean, it's, it's like having two brothers. You don't really have much of a life. You do it because you love what we do. And these guys, you know, the guys that they live here, we have an employee housing here on site. And the, and the guys, we work 70 to 90 hours a week, sometimes more, all summer long. I mean, in a place like this, it's busy all the time. You're here all the time. I mean, even Saturday and Sundays, we work four or five hours in the morning. We go home, the guys go home, take a nap for a couple hours, and we come back and we water all afternoon. You know, from 19 to, you know, 30 years old, we all live in a in a house on property, it's a, it's a mini frat house. So I kind of ad adapted the role as, you know, the RA of the frat house, sort, sort of being, being here so long. But, you know, we crush it, we have fun, we argue, we fight. We got 17 guys living here right now, house on property. This whole wing is all ground staff, upstairs and downstairs, basic, you know, dorm style living. I'm lucky enough to have an apartment in here, um, but everybody got their own room. Laundry, place is a mess. All the hours are cranking right now. Some guys share like a uh, common bathroom. Everybody's got their own room. I'm sure, it's like dorm style housing. The product that you're judged on is on public display every day. Every day. There is no bad day for us. What you see out there is what we produce, and it's there's no mistakes. I mean, it's 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 crazy hours. Sun up to sun down, seven days a week. There's no downtime. Like I tell people, there's no redo button. The whole crew at Winged Foot works tirelessly to keep the course in pristine condition, and one of the most fundamental jobs in the process belongs to the team inside the garage. John, our ace mechanic here, is checking the heights, okay? So we check heights every day. This is called a bed knife. You got paper in there? Yeah. Sharp? So I'll find that in a minute. Nope. nope. So oh, see, yeah, it. It's, in it's not cutting the paper right now. So what he does is adjust that. So when that's sharp, that goes right through. So he's adjusting this. And then what he does is he's adjusting the reel to the bed knife. So we sharpen, John, we have a grinding room, and John sharpens the reel, puts a, a cut and a relief on that, and he has to sharpen the bed knife, so it creates a scything effect. So that when it's sharp, it, it cuts paper. It just, effortlessly. So every day that gets, every day these get changed and sharpened and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just full time, it's full time busy just doing this, let alone when stuff doesn't, when stuff breaks. Playing host to a U.S. Open is a rare opportunity for any course maintenance staff. Although it's often described as one of the most thankless jobs in the industry, 
However, there will always be one person appreciative of their efforts on the course, the man who helped build it. Can you state your name? Sure. Gil Hans, golf course architect. Okay. Myself the conditions. What, what do you say about this crew that we have here, Wingfoot? You know, I think that's part of why this place is so special, is because we had one of the best crews if not the best crew I've ever worked with. I mean, the amount of time and the hours that these guys put in out here is astronomical. You couldn't count it. It, it was cold, it was wet, it was fall in New York, it was nighttime with lights on. No matter what it took, Steve and his crew really went every extra step that we could have asked for. We were out here side by side working hard on this thing, and I never once ever saw him even think twice about it. Maybe let's cut that corner. Maybe it'll be a little bit easier if we do this. It was always 100% get it right, do the right thing for the club, do the right thing for the crew. The other side. So then we cut the longer part for us two, five, eight, uh, 16, 17. Uh, we cut that, graduated. And that's at 12 feet wide, right? three inches. And then everything else we cut at four and a half this week. That's, so, that's, yeah, that's four and a half. We were watching up there, walking around. Where you mowing with like the lawn boys? It's like you got to move the whole thing. Yeah, we're mowing. We're mowing all things around, all piece around, bunkers all by hand. You know, a lot of times you, as an architect, you have good relationships with superintendents, but this one is a really close and special one because I know how much he cares and loves this place, and he can be a little gruff. Steve's a once-in-a-lifetime guy. The amount of cigars he smokes, have you, have, have you seen how many cigars he smokes? Well, it's one of those things that you can see him coming all the way across the golf course. That's his thing. He doesn't drink, he doesn't gamble, he doesn't do anything. He just, his thing is cigars. He's the most passionate person I think I've ever met about Terry. Ah, oh, he's intense. Uh, very, very intense. He's, uh... He strives for one goal. We all have one goal, and that's to make Wingfoot the best it is. And he wants shit done the right way, but it's just because he cares so much about this place. He wants it to be as pristine as possible. If you ask him about rough, he'll get a little excited about how thick it's going to be. And it's light out. You can definitely see the smoke coming. And uh, if it's if it's nighttime, you can see the glow. Uh, you can tell how you can tell what kind of mood he's in. If, you, if he's like a chimney coming across or a freight train, you know he's huffing and puffing and there's probably going to be a little bit of smoke from coming out of his ears as well. Or at night, if you start to see that thing really burn and really deep, you know, but if it's just the more relaxed, you know, little puff here and there, then you know he's going to be in a pretty good mood. The U.S. Open brings about change both on and off the course at each of its championship locations. However, one staple for the last 30 years has been the managing director of rules and open championships for the USGA, Jeff Hall. It's working with the leadership of the club and very closely with the superintendent and his team on how can we best present their golf course to the best players in the world consistent with the US Open. We made some changes a few years back on some fairways that we narrowed. Um, we wanted to do that early. You know, so they've been here and throughout the whole process and making sure that what they want, we were giving them. There wasn't a lot we had to do. You know, I think Wingfoot is, is uh, and I think they say it, it's, it's we're basically a championship golf course. You give Wingfoot three weeks notice and they, you know, put the rough mowers in the shop and leave them there for a little bit, a little while and Wingfoot's ready to have the U.S. Open. But the hardest thing was just the morale with the crew. Steve and his guys, they didn't know what was happening. Are we going to play in June or are we not going to play in June? And you plan for June 14th, 2020. And our agronomic plan was laid out to be for June 2020. And the things we did last fall was for June 2020. And then that changes. So these guys, this is their life. And this is why certain staff come here. Interns, assistants, they quit jobs, they move, they do stuff for this for the U.S. Open years and years in advance. And people don't realize that. So the, the ebb and flow of emotion and the, the Steve and guys and his crew, they, they may get to do a U.S. Open once. You know, it, it was a gut punch as things were developing. But what I have noticed with every subsequent visit, the energy from his team, this is really gonna happen. 
getting back in the grind of things, but seeing tents go up and USGA staff here and the course where it's at, everyone's excited, ready to go. You know, and then weather throws a whole monkey wrench in that thing too. So, you know, where are we at? What do we got coming? Uh, that could change what we do. The DNA of Wingfoot, it will, it will hold its own under any weather situation. But everything we've done in the restoration and everything we've, we've done day in and day out has been to create firm fast conditions. And you know, during the open, there'll be a, a large crew, you know, we call it fluff and rough. So it's gonna be a fluff crew out there making sure you're raking, raking the rough and, and blowing the rough with backpack blowers, trying to stand any of that rough that gets matted down. You know, so hopefully we're, we're hoping to peak, you know, uh, at the start of that uh, champ week. But getting the course ready for golf's ultimate test isn't the only thing on the minds of Steve and his crew. Each September, a somber tradition is carried out on the grounds of Wingfoot Golf Club. A brief but meaningful moment when the entire property comes to a rare standstill. We also lift up our voice in prayer today for all those who, in fulfillment of their duty, rush to the scene of the attacks to come to the aid of their fellow man in danger. We remember with hearts full of gratitude the first responders who died. We likewise remember all the members of the United States Armed Forces who went to war to defeat those who attacked us, especially those who made the supreme sacrifice and those who bear the wounds of combat. Bless them all, good Lord. You know, unfortunately people forget. You know, people forget, you know, and that was, uh, that was pretty, uh, pretty crazy times. You know, a lot of the younger people, they were too young to remember what happened. It didn't affect them. Uh, it's gonna keep some, something like that going. Final preparations for the championship are underway. As we depart from the crew, players are just beginning to arrive on the property. The U.S. Open is finally here. It's exciting, yet nerve-wracking. You know, we want to make sure we put on a good show for the world. You know, wanting to get everything where we want to get it, you know, uh, is, uh, it's stressful. Winged foot will soon be on display for over 120 million people and it's starting to feel real for those most intimately involved. Uh, we've done all of the work to get us to this point, and I think the golf course is exactly where we want it. I think you're going to see the best players in the world who have immense skills match those skills against one of the most iconic U.S. Open venues in our country, and it, it should be great to watch. The golf course is just coming into its own. Rough's getting nasty, and we're ready. Hope the tour players are and you're gonna hit bad shots, and you're gonna be in the rough, and you're just gonna to have to take your medicine, and you're gonna to have to try to score where you can score. And I don't think there's, there's, there's no let up out here. You know, it's, it's a true US Open golf course. You're gonna to have to grind it out. <laughs> 